23. The Earth's Atmosphere and Precipitation. 3rd of February, 1847. That the sun is easily understandable and only the supporter, but not the so completely actual self-giver of the light, is easily illuminated from the fact that the sun first takes up the light from the innumerable suns on its shining surface and then throws it out like a united light into the wide ether spaces. This united light of many stars, which is thrown out, meets everywhere also those rays of light which fall directly from the stars on this earth, then unites with these rays of light and then falls together with them on the earth. Therein lies the support. And the sole sunlight would be very dull if the light of the stars did not work with it just as the sole light of the moon would be very dim if it were not supported by the sunlight, as the latter is supported by the starlight. That one light can support the other, however, is proven to you by several lit lights in a room, which obviously spread a greater brightness than a single one. At the already known altitude of the mountains, however, this support cannot be of such effect as in the lower situated region, because, as already mentioned above, the rays have not yet reached the sufficient density, which is due to the fact that the circle of air around the earth is a lenticular round transparent body, as it were, like a large burning glass, in which the ray of sunlight, when it is passed through it, does not immediately get the burning intensity behind the glass, but only at that distance which is equal to half the diameter of that periphery from which the focal surface of the focal glass is taken. But the beam always comes closer together behind the focal glass and therefore also becomes more and more effective until it finally reaches its fullest force at the focal distance. The focal point of the large air lens would be, of course, only in the centre of the earth. Where, however, never a sun ray reaches, But nevertheless, the light ray, which falls on the surface of this large earth lens, becomes within itself, towards the earth as it approaches, the ever denser and more effective focal point. Objects, like the mountains, come then already more into the less dense part of the light rays than the low-lying valleys and especially the coastal areas of the earth. Therefore, the rays from the more distant stars cannot yet have any perceptible condensation there, and therefore do not yet exert any influence on the vegetation. Or in other words, these rays of light do not yet form any propertia at such altitudes. Therefore, also, those different plant species, which need such propertia, do not progress at such altitudes. For this reason, however, the air at such heights is always increasingly purer in itself, which is basically quite natural. For the less mixture there is in a liquid, the purer the liquid must be in itself. Just as, 
a man always becomes purer in his heart and fresher and stronger the more he has banished from himself the many kinds of mixture of all kinds of passions, desires and needs. But because at such heights, or rather in these regions, the rays from the smaller stars, as even those from the sun, due to their low concentration, cannot yet have such an effect as lower down. Such a region of height is, in a way, a transition point from the earlier non-effect to its increasing effect. Or at such heights, the rays begin to concentrate, partly by their own concentration, and partly by the reflection or those returning rays which bounce off the Earth's surface again. Through this radiation and counter-radiation, certain evolutions are caused in the light, which in itself looks like a kind of wave. If this surging continues for a time, it also causes a propertium for the reason that this surging is already a chemical process of light, according to your learned way of speaking. And this propertium, which is of course a mixed variety, first appears as high mountain fog. And if this chemical light process is not interrupted by something, Cloud masses will soon appear from the fogs in this high altitude region, which gradually become more and more dense, and finally even fall to earth in raindrops, or in wintertime also in snowflakes. That the rain and all these things falling from the air originate from the light is proved by so many phenomena on the earth's surface especially in the tropical countries, where not infrequently a rain falls which covers everything with a phosphorus-like light gleam on which it falls. Even the surface of the sea often shines so strongly as if it were completely glowing. Even objects which are moistened by the sea shimmer like musty wood in the forests. No less the snow has its own light and clearly shows that it is a product of the light. In this way, seen from a natural point of view, the fog and cloud formations in our second air region come into being. Whereby, of course, the mutually polar acting power of the North and South Poles, which is especially active in this region, must not be disregarded, for through them, these new formations are saturated with telluric electricity, and only through this saturation do they receive that condensation, through which they are then supplied to the earth body as a nourishment for its plant and animal world. The saturated clouds, which have thus absorbed the telluric, usually get a dark coloration, while the unsaturated pure ones look much whiter and also lighter. This double type of clouds then forms an opposite polarity among itself where the saturated dark one presents itself as negative and the unsaturated pure white as positive. It is self-evident that the negative must always draw the short straw. For what is heavy and always becomes heavier must fall down. 
Therefore, also people who saturate their hearts with too much earthly negative silliness and thereby always weigh it down more and more and thereby also make it denser and more opaque and more unsuitable for the light are not skilled to ascend into the kingdom of light but thereby make it more fit and more suitable for the fall into the kingdom of darkness. A common phenomenon on such heights is that people who take the trouble to climb to such a height usually become very cheerful and happy on just such a height climbed and easily forget all the troubles they had to fight with in the depth. At the same time, most of them get a strong desire to eat and drink, and only at such a height can they enjoy food without any stomach problems, which they would not even be able to look at in the depths. The cause of this lies only in the greater purity of the air and has a great similarity with the condition of the blessed who may also enjoy everything and nothing will harm them because in the pure everything is purified more and more and the harmful can no longer become harmful there where it no longer finds any further nourishment due to the lack of the property necessary for it. This would be a sufficient representation of the second air region, which rises above 10,000 fathoms above sea level, and of course becomes purer the further upward. Next, therefore, we will go to the third air region and see what happens there and what this air region is useful for. <laughs>